All right, guys. So welcome to another video, and today we are talking about Pixel experience on the Poco X3 Pro, the latest update that was released on the 31st of March 2022. Now, this of course is a video after a week of me using it, so there are going to be a lot of things that we're going to talk about. But in today's video, we're going to talk about the complete review of Pixel experience for this wonderful device. So without further ado, hello, awesome people. Welcome to Phone Ops. My name is Kalash. Let's get going. Now, before we begin, I would request you to please subscribe because it doesn't cost you anything and it really motivates us to make amazing content like this. Now, what you see over here is Pixel Experience official for the Poco X3 Pro. It works on both Wii U and Gima. Android version is Android 12 and the build date, as I said, is the 31st of March 2022. Now, the changelog over here says it's an initial Android 12.1 or 12L release, March security patch, updated translations, merged tag, fix ghost touch issues on kernel, increase ZRAM to 4 GB and some improvements. In the notes section, it is mentioned that this is an OSS based ROM. It includes G apps. Firmware required is 12.0 onwards. SE Linux status is enforcing and safety net should be passing just fine. So, you know, all those things check out for a very, very good ROM experience and you will see why I exactly say that. First things first, let's actually go to settings over here and let's go to about and the Android version that is Android version 12. Strange enough, it doesn't show Android 12.1 or Android L, any of those over here. Now, the security patch is the March security patch along with perf kernel. Now, it will be interesting to see how the perf kernel performs in terms of numbers, but we will see that. Now, let's go back to the home screen or the main screen where the entire experience of pixel experience starts. Now, the moment you boot into this particular ROM, you will see that this is a very minimalistic and clean experience with a pure Google-esque look, beautiful wallpapers all around. To the left, of course, you have Google Feed, which works beautifully. Now, with 12.1 or Android L, the smoothness is just rock solid. It works really, really well. I don't see any stutters, any jitters. And let me tell you, I've been using this ROM at least for the last two to three days. And the experience in the UI, at least, has been pretty fluid, pretty decent. Now, when you look at the home screen, you will see minimalistic icons, a search bar at the bottom. If you press and hold over here, you will get this new look of the wallpapers. So if you click on it once, you get a complete preview and then it will apply itself along with monet customization that is also available. So if you go to wallpaper in style, you will see that you have different color combinations along with themed icons, which is still in beta. You can make changes to the app grid. So these options are present as well. And apart from this, as you can see, these themed icons are changing color. So let's go to maybe a different colored wallpaper. And here we go. So it immediately changes and this preview look is something that is really, really nice. Now along with this, you have widgets which are Android 12.1. There is no difference in the widget look and feel. They look exactly the same, but the smoothness is definitely there. If you go to home settings, you will see that you are greeted with a very, very basic pixel launcher which gives you all the options that were present in the previous versions as well. Now, apart from this, if you go to the multitasking menu, you will see that you have options like screenshot, which works absolutely fine along with edit and share options. You also have the option of select text that works absolutely fine. And apart from this, you have this multitasking menu, which allows you to you know, split screen and pause the application and get app info as well. So the multitasking menu not only looks good, but it is very, very smooth and fluid along with a clear all button. Now, if you swipe from the top to bottom, let's see here, this is 12.1 and the effect is really, really nice. These cuts over here that you see are really, really beautiful. And you have things like screen recorder, which allows you to record internal and external audio. That is a good thing. And you don't really see a lot of advanced options in terms of screen recorder, which you do get in some other custom ROMs, but that's fine. So let's actually go ahead and record internal and external audio. And the timer is here. All right. So the recording has begun with the notification and you can see the UI scrolling is still smooth as butter. Although, you know, maybe two or 5% smoothness might have reduced but it's still plenty. It doesn't give you any hiccups or any jitters. Now, what this means is when you will be recording the gameplay using the built-in screen recorder on Pixel Experience, you will have a pretty good flawless experience. Now, let's quickly have a look at the quality of this recording along with the audio quality.
all right so the external audio is up and down you know it's coming and going probably that's something that they can work on but once it settles down the you know quality and the pitch is the same so that's a good thing so the screen recorder is doing a pretty decent job now apart from this if you see you have the edit menu the power menu the settings option and at the top you have all the information that you need now if you go to the edit menu you will see you have some extra tiles but you don't really have a ton of extra tiles that's what pixel experience is known for if you talk about the pre-installed applications in the particular rom you don't really get a ton of applications is a very very minimalistic rom and that is the reason you get very decent fluidity you also get a camera application which is not really really you know something that gives you a lot of options so you can probably go for gcam with the best xml and stuff like that now safety net passes out of the box wideband l1 is present so not only you can use your banking applications you can also go ahead and enjoy your amazon prime hd content on your poco x3 pro on this custom rom as well now all said and done you know the dialer the messaging application all of them are by google and they seem to be working absolutely fine along with wi-fi calling now what else about android 12.1 if you go to the battery section you do have optimization profiles so if you are say you know doing a benchmark like i've selected performance mode over here so those options are present unfortunately the high touch sampling rate option is not present you can go ahead and enable the battery percentage if you go to apps you will have your game settings or game dashboard which can be enabled from here and compatible games should be working just fine now if you go to notification you have the feature of notification history is standard usual android 12 stuff going on and it is working absolutely fine apart from this compared to android 12 in 12.1 you don't really have a lot of changes even in the display section you will see that you have 60 hertz and 90 hertz and 120 hertz so that's always a good thing you have tap to wake auto rotate screen so all the basic functions and features are available and they are working as expected now if you go to system you will have the gestures option over here under which you do have a few options and you also have press and hold power button for power menu hold for assistant so all these things are present and they work absolutely fine use quick tap now quick tap is something that i've not tried off lately on this particular phone but it will be very very interesting to try before i review pixel experience for the next time so all in all if you ask me about pixel experience the latest update builds on it but everything said and done how are two things over here the first thing that you're going to ask me is the battery life now as you can see we are at 94 percent and if you look at the battery usage we have been using the phone very lightly but on a normal day when you're using this phone with 100 percent to 10 percent battery you will get around six to six and a half hours of screen on time because perf kernel the conservative kernel gives you very decent battery life now let's quickly go ahead and look at important aspects like google photos do you get unlimited storage or not let's go ahead and check that so it does say backing up from this pixel is free and unlimited so that is a good thing now let's go ahead and talk about some benchmark numbers so first thing that we'll check is anti to benchmark and the score here is 587 589 pretty standard score just about 10,000 more than what you would normally see on the stock rom that is miui now let's go ahead and check the cpu throttle test all right now as you can see excellent performance over here the cpu throttle to 91 percent of its max performance and the max score was 190 to 835 gips so the max score could have been above 200,000, but this is perf kernel we are talking about so not really disappointed that is what is expected out of perf kernel now moving on if you actually go to history you will see the single core score on geekbench is 758 and the multi-core score is 2478 now apart from this i did try bgmi and call of duty mobile and the performance has been pretty decent if you are a casual gamer you can definitely go ahead and use this if you play just for one two hours you will not have any major issues definitely not for competitive gamers because there are a lot of other better performing custom roms for the poco x3 pro out there which should do a pretty pretty decent job even with the march update the latest update based on android 12.1 this ROM feels complete. You can use it as a daily driver. There are no major ch changes or things that are missing. Let me know in the comments section what do you think about this ROM. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.